Each week, American History TV's Real America brings you archival films that help tell the story of the 20th century. In the second of a five-part look at Hollywood directors who made films for the U.S. government during World War II, we feature George Stevens, who was with the invading army 70 years ago on June 6, 1944, to document D-Day. Stevens assisted in production of the film The True Glory, which includes extensive D-Day footage, and he also documented the horrors of Nazi concentration camps, creating films that were used as evidence during the Nuremberg trials. But first, we talk to journalist and film historian Mark Harris. The book is titled Five Came Back, a story of Hollywood and the Second World War, and one of the directors featured by author Mark Harris is George Stevens. Each of these directors had different reasons uh, for going in, and uh, for Stevens, um, who, like all of the directors, was old enough so that he could have gotten a civilian uh, exemption from the war, really wanted what he uh, called a, a seat on the 50-yard line of history. Uh, he felt that it was a patriotic duty to go. He, he had been um, chafing uh, in Hollywood because he felt pigeonholed into uh, making these very light movies when he had wanted to uh, make some films with more contemporary or war-related content. And uh, when he wasn't able to do it at uh, RKO or Columbia, uh, he, he jumped at the chance to, um, to do it in the Army and for the Army. Uh, interestingly, uh, of the five directors, Stevens is the only one who um, never made a sort of freestanding documentary during the war that was uh, shown to civilian audiences, but his work in the war, which ranged from uh, restaging uh, battle scenes uh, in North Africa to uh, becoming the first uh, major American filmmaker to enter the camps after they were liberated, uh, and his films there actually uh, provided evidence uh, for the Nuremberg trials. His, his work in the war was maybe the most wide-ranging and in some ways historically significant in terms of the camp footage of any directors during the war. Let me follow up on that point because he was a member of the U.S. Army Signal Corps under the leadership of then General Eisenhower, who was clearly responsible for the historic invasion on D-Day 70 years ago this year. Where was George Stevens? during that time in June 1944? Uh, Stevens was, uh, was right there uh, at, at D-Day. He, you know, just as John Ford was at D-Day supervising the um, filming effort made by the Navy, uh, Stevens was there overseeing the shooting done by the Army. And uh, of all of the, the major battles and, and turning points in the war, D-Day was the one that Allied filmmakers had the longest uh, and best opportunity to prepare for. This was a filming effort that involved um, hundreds of cameras, both stationary and manned, and dozens of cameramen. And um, Stevens, you know, as the war progressed, uh, often his function was to um, coordinate some filmmaking efforts with the Allies, the, particularly the British or uh, Canadians, and, and that was one of the things he did at um, D-Day. Ford asked uh, if uh, Stevens wouldn't mind um, uh, working with the British to help shore up their D-Day filmmaking effort, and I believe that um, uh, the, the ship that Stevens arrived on, uh, on D-Day, was in fact a British ship. Our enemy in this campaign was strong, resourceful, and cunning. But he made a few mistakes. His greatest blunder was this. He thought he could break up our partnership. But we were welded together by fighting for one great cause. In one great team. A team in which you were an indispensable and working member. That spirit of free people working, fighting, and living together in one great cause has served us well on the Western Front. We in the field pray that that spirit of comradeship will persist forever among the free peoples of the United Nations.